I feel kind of bad about. It's what, it's what I call procrasta gardening. I should really be inside working on my book, but we have some sun. It's the first time we've seen the sun in quite a long time. And since I really need to get some work done outside, I'm feeling that kind of tension where I feel guilty if I'm not working on one thing and I feel guilty if I'm not working on another thing. So progress to gardening it is. And I'm gonna plant this window box today, which is in this bed that I told you I've been making over and I just have what I consider to constantly be an incomplete download. I just can't seem to get it finished, either because of rain or timing or other things. But this weekend, by gosh, by golly, I am going to get this whole area finished and finished pruning and looking lovely. So I'm gonna start out with my window box. Um, this used to be just crammed full. I had two boxwood in it and it was completely filled with variegated green and white and some yellow and white ivy that had been here for years and years. I want to say probably 10 years. I lost it all in the Arctic blast. So I'm basically starting out from scratch. Now this window box was custom built for me. It looks to be about 12 inches deep, maybe about 15 inches or I should say in height, it's about 12 inches deep, maybe a little bit more, about 18 inches deep. And it really is, it, it performs like a mini garden, if you ask me. So you can see how it is spacious enough that I was actually able to put in a couple of two to three gallon boxwood. So I had to replace them and I've got them planted kind of high. So, um, so that isn't an issue because I'm going to be planting around them and I don't want any kind of root rot. Now I'm having to recreate that look of things just cascading over the side. I had it and it was really wonderful because I had it in this kind of scalloped way that I had styled it and it looked really great. But again, I'm having to start all over. So I am, as Stuart said, are you really digging up things in your garden to replace in your window box? And yes, I am. Um, so here's my question. Do you guys ever do that? Or do you ever steal from Peter to pay Paul to finish another project in your garden, either because you want to save money, which is oftentimes the case for me, more often it's the case because I'm too lazy to go to the store and I've got something in my flower beds that's too crowded uh, and might actually perform better in a container garden like this window box. So, so I love reading your guys' comments and more importantly, other people love reading your comments. So make sure that you put which zone you garden in so other people can share um, and repeat some of your ideas. We're all kind of stealing from one another which is the greatest form of uh, kleptomania, I think. So I put in these two, these are baby gin boxwoods. These are Southern Living Plants and I'll put the link below. Now, one thing I dug up was in the back, in the potager, I have a bunch of Vinca Minor that's kind of taking over a little bit. And when it was really rainy, I dug up a big clump of it and I am going to put it on either end. So I have dug up this big clump and I do like the way it's gonna look, I think. So I'm gonna repeat that down on the other end. Now, here's a trick, you guys. This had a good enough root system so that I can get it established and I can bury it deeply enough. But if I really want it, to spread across the entire surface. Let me move this center geranium out of the way. Off the entire surface of the window box, then these little floral clips do great. You could use a bobby pin, you could use anything. You could probably even use a paper clip. But what this does is take these tendrils, which might have a tendency to go like this. You can see right here where there are some roots that had previously been growing in the ground in the back of the potager. And at the point where those roots are, I'm gonna take one of these little floral picks and I'll put a link below to where I get them. And I need some more myself because I think that's my last floral pick. Um, and then I just secure these tendrils to the surface and what they will do is root at the root zone wherever a leaf meets the stem. 
and you can see how you could take even a really large irrigation pick like that and you could do the same thing. It just ensures that there is good vine or tendril contact with the soil. So that's what I'm that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to repeat this same thing on the other side. I will keep it trimmed so that it continues to bush out and I don't just have these singular uh, vines coming over the end, but I, over the edge, but I want it to be really thick with vines and so I will I will keep clipping that so it gets bushier and bushier. Now here's another example of how I steal from Peter to pay Paul. I do have to stand up on my little plastic thrift store uh, footstool and I did that and now I'm standing on top of my hose reel. Suncast hose reel, it's strong enough to hold me. And so what I've done is I actually, in the front beds on the east side, on the driveway side, I had some hosta that really weren't doing much of anything. They weren't getting too large. They were just kind of sitting there. So I dug, I just dug one up this morning. I planted this one the other day and I am going to plant these on either side, just inside of those boxwoods. And what I've done is planted them to the front and slightly on an angle, you guys, so that they will look like they're already starting to grow over the edge. And as I've said before, plants don't know which way is up. Their roots don't know which way is up, so I could plant it all the way on, on the side if I wanted to. And then I just had a couple of other miscellaneous things that like shady conditions. And this is very shady over here. And so I'm just gonna add some of those over time in these wet, nice conditions we have. These things, which may not look too perky now. Sometimes I'll do this with house plants. I'll take a house plant that is suffering a little bit and I'll put it outside in a shady location. So I've got a little fern there and I've got some ivy here, which I think will be really pretty once it starts mixing in with the vinca minor there. And these were things that I just had sitting in other pots or they were in other containers. I should have watered this one first. I'm just going to really loosen up that root balsam. I'll stick this in here far enough to the back you're so good, um, far enough to the back that it will kind of grow in both directions. And I'll take some of these tendrils and weave them around that way, and then I'll secure those with a pick later. Now, my friends at Brex, they sent me some Bertini Ever Blooming Begonias. I have not tried these before, and these grow and plant in partial to full shade. So that's wonderful. They'll bloom to first frost. They're gonna get 16 inches tall and I'm supposed to plant them one inch deep and 10 inches apart. I can't tell you how much I like the fact that they put the planting directions right on the package and they're not separate. So that makes it so easy for me. These are orange red blooms with star shaped single petals. Okay, now I have, I think five packages of these. And you can see that they've already got some great stems erupting from this tuber. So I'm going to point that guy to the front. I'm not going to plant her or him too deeply. I'm going to call those hers right there. And I'll put the next one about not quite a foot apart. This is a container basket after all. I mean, look at how container garden, look at how great that is with the eyes. Sometimes you question what part goes up and what part goes down. But you can see some subtle little roots there. These are kind of desiccated and dried out, but you can definitely see where the eye is erupting from the tuber. And I'll put that about an inch below. Now what I do, you guys, is that a lot of times they'll be packaged in these wood shavings. And what I do is I just take those wood shavings and I put it on top of where I planted the tubers so I will know where to look for the eye a little bit later without damaging 
the little guy that's starting to come up and starting to try to bloom. There's another one. I'm going to plant this one kind of over in here. Now, you may ask me, okay, what kind of soil did I use? This was replenished a while ago. It's really good quality potting mix. I didn't even add, well, yes, I did. I can't, couldn't remember. I added a little bit of Osmocote to it. You could see some of those little circular balls. That's plant food. I added a little bit of Osmocote to that. But this is really good rich soil. I'm not going to have to do a lot to it. Do the same thing there. What I like about this, I've already planted one on this side. And I think I've already planted one over there. You just can't see it. So I've got three here, two on the ends. The hostas in the foreground. I need to get a little bit I've got a little bit of Inca Miner over here, but I need to probably dig up some more of it. I'll wait till the next time it rains. And it may not look like such a much right now, but I promise you in short order, all of this is going to start taking off. And it's going to be all the happier because unlike what I normally do, which is probably overplant and plant way too many things in too small of a space. This time I'm giving this stuff room to grow. This does have a metal liner, you guys, that I'm planting in so it doesn't rot. And after I'm finished here, after I get it all watered in, then I will wash my window, which will be the first part to ultimately cleaning up this area. Over here, you can see I've got some dead English ivy vines that are growing. That's because I only let the English ivy grow to a certain point, and then I cut it, and I remove those tendrils that just attach to the brick. So I'll get out a ladder, and I will remove those later. But you're right, I, ivy can be destructive to the house, but I never let it really get out of control. So there you go. There is this window box. Oh. I have another one back here, so maybe I didn't plant it. I lied. Here, you guys think you can trust me. But easily enough, I can get that in there. I love it when they don't have to be buried very deep, and the soil is really soft and easy to penetrate. So there you go, guys. This is the kitchen window box, and you know what? As a as a little uh, extra treat, we're going to go in front and we're going to see how the one in the front is progressing. Well, I'm really out of my comfort zone with this front window box because it's going to be all about color this year. I'm still trying to analyze and, and I'm not sure what the end result is going to be as to how much more sun I'm going to get on this south facing window box than I had in the past. It will definitely get more, but I'm not sure how much more. And that will probably depend on how far the sun is south in the sky as the summer age. So that's what I'm thinking right now. But I have really this lovely, I think, orchestration of really bright colors. Now, it's not completely filled in now. It needs to get settled in. But nevertheless, you can see the color scheme that I've got going. I planted this this morning. I already had in there some uh, blue salvia forensia because my color scheme is kind of being, uh, it's, it's, I guess my muse has been this purple uh, emerald amethyst, I, I believe that's the variety, um, agapanthus from Southern Living. So I've got some of this and it's almost the exact same color as all of that larkspur that went to seed in the front. So my color palette is kind of this purple and orange and these are all sun lovers, you guys. And I'm complementing it with some of this bicolored gold, yellow, and orange lantana. 
And here's a tip, you guys. I couldn't find in smaller, in cell packs or in four inch starts, I couldn't find enough of this lantana to make the root ball small enough to plant in here. But what I did was I just bought a couple of hanging baskets and fortunately, the root ball was not so compacted that it's easy enough for me to separate these different plants which I can then put in the window box or in my flower beds up front. They already have good form and I can just plop them in and they already have a degree of maturity. So I really like that. I love the way this is going to look with this red celosia and this purple scaviola, which matches the purple muse of that agapanthus and also that salvia forensia. Now, right now the light is not good, but I'm not gonna complain because we haven't had sun for so long. When all of this is in softer light, I'll definitely have Stuart um, come and we'll show you what this looks like after it's been watered and it's gotten a little bit of relief from the sun. Here is another tip, you guys. Look right now at this coleus on the harsh end that's in full sunlight and see how it's drooping. And it just looks a little bit tired and wilting. And then look at this over here, this gold coleus right here, and it's just fine. So what this means is this coleus on this end does, good move Stuart, on this end does not necessarily need water. It's just hot because both of these have been, um, they're adequately hydrated. It's just that this one is a little bit wilted from the sun and this one is not. I say that because I'm all too often, I, I can be an inveterate uh, overwaterer and I tend to look at something like that and think, oh, you need a drink. It doesn't necessarily need a drink. I need to stick my finger down about one inch into the soil to determine if it's thirsty or if it's just hot and sweaty like I am. So this entire assortment of things here, I had to replace the boxwoods. These are green mountain boxwoods. And then I just put in gold coleus, some purple scaviola, just some red inexpensive uh, celosia. This is, well, it doesn't say exactly what variety it is, but it wants full sun. I like the fact that it will really pop from the street. And I might or might not come and add a little bit more lantana back in here but I wanna give these guys some room to grow and mature. And then I did have a bunch of pur purple romaine lettuce in here. You can see the tail end of it over here because I'm into edible appointments in lots of my compositions. Uh, and we've already eaten all the rest of that romaine. There's a little bit there, which I think we'll be able to use um, maybe on our fish tacos tonight. So there you guys is uh, my, my, my colorful, my experimentation with color. I'll let you know how it performs over time. Hopefully it will get enough sun, but maybe not too much. Um, I guess I've done enough procrastinate gardening for today. So let me know if you guys ever do that and make me feel not quite so guilty. So you guys enjoy your weekend and I'll catch you later. So today's ensemble is just very much has a weekend vibe. So my sunglasses, because you'll probably ask, are Ray-Bans, Ray-Ban aviators. If, if I spend money on anything, it is on good sunglasses because I'm outside all of the time and I have a million pair. I guess I'm starting backwards today. My earrings, I got at Nordstrom Rack and they were from Madewell, but I got them at Nordstrom Rack, as I did my striped t-shirt. Now here's a hint, you guys. Madewell t-shirts, I love Madewell clothing, and Madewell t-shirts are absolutely my most favorite t-shirts. I love how comfortable they are, I love the fit. I've got broad shoulders, and they fit my broad shoulders without being too baggy through here. They're kind of pricey, but you can get them at Nordstrom Rack for less. I think I picked up maybe four or five of them. I don't shop very often. 
So when I find them, I'll pick up several. So I got like four or five of them and they were about 12 to $13 at Nordstrom Rack. Um, my jeans are Abercrombie and Fitch. They are kind of wide leg ankle, ankle length. And my boots, which I adore, are Merry People. Now they have sent me some to try. I've got a couple pair of them. Um, I did a promo, a sponsorship for them a while back. I love them. I've got these in yellow too. They are a little bit more expensive on the front end, but oh my gosh, they are so, so worth it. And if you're like me and you do lots of running around in what I call apre garden attire, something that's kind of cute enough to be out and about after you're finishing your gardening, then I think they're gr great groovy they're groovy and great with that with skirts and things like that plus they are so durable i love them for actually digging and working in the garden and so that's my ensemble for today